In this video, we're going to create a scale here where we can show here the category, but on the other side, we'll make another scale that shows the values of our data points here. You can see here we have number 12, etc. etc. And to make sure it's easy to spot here, I built a quick and simple logarithmic scale for very large values so you can see them all working nicely. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to add two scales with the right scale showing the values or the data points in charges while the left side of the scale will, we will show just the standard city for example. So to do this what we need to do is we need to go to charges3.com getting started this specific link here to get the default code. So we go in here and this link you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here scroll down here and copy this chunk of code. Copy all of this. If you want to understand this code make sure you watch this video here. So then I'll just paste that in there. I'll cut this out and I will put that in here. Say refresh. There we are. Now we have this nice bar chart but of course I want to maximize the size of this. 80% there we are and make this a horizontal bar chart. So I'm going to scroll down here in the options, I'll say index axis and swap instead of the x axis, we will swap with the y axis. So all these categories here will go here. So this is what we call category axis. So the next thing what I want to do is I want to have basically a category axis on the right side showing the values that we have here. Let's say here number 18, 12, etc. etc. But we also have the numbers here on the x scale. So to do this. First of all, I want to change this to say this is the X scale because this is the X scale that contains the number. So that makes sense. The next thing what I want to do is I want to say here for the Y scale, we're going to just leave it as it is, but I want to force the position to the left. So it will not influence this. Once I did that, I do another Y scale, let's say Y or Y data. And that will be the other scale, which is Position, position on the right side and if you can give this any name you want as long as you just specify this and then we're going to say here position on the right side save this refresh you can see now we have left and right the same values right now the reason for this is because it's a category axis and it just grabs the category of our labels here so what I want to do is instead of the category I want to say to charge yes to grab these values instead. So how do we do this? Well, in here we're going to put a comma and we go to the ticks because we want to modify the ticks specifically because these here are called the tick labels or the ticks. So then in here I'll build a callback or I use the callback functionality and we're going to use here function and this is very important. I'm going to write out function and you might say well we could just skip that because we can use the ES6 shorthand. In this case, we cannot, we must use function. I'm going to explain later on why. And in here, what we have is the few parameters, value, index, and let's say the ticks. Once we have this, what I want to do here is do a console log. And then I'll just show you here the values. If I do this, say refresh, open up developer tab, you can see here we get these values, which are basically as well the index numbers. And this is also the index numbers if I'm not mistaken. There you are, from 0 all the way to 6. So they are basically the same. Index and value are the same by default of a category axis. Very important. Not from the number axis here. That's a different story. So the reason why we have the function here and not use a function expression with the arrow and remove this is because we, are, we need to use the value of this. If I do this, this will only work if you have the function. If you don't have the function written out, it will not support. As you can see here, once we do this, or once we use the, th the this value, you can see we have access to the chart object. And from the chart object, we could basically go down to the data object. And the data object consists of our labels, but also the data sets, and more specifically, index zero. And what we need is just the data here, just grabbing out, grabbing this one here. So if you don't believe me, of course, we can just show you, will this work if I do it like that? Well, the answer is of course no, but just to show you, say refresh. All right, so now it apparently it does work, but it doesn't work the way we expect, if I'm not mistaken. It's slightly different. So this is very important. Anyway, doesn't matter so much. I want to just maintain the original state that we have. So 
Where we really, really are going is basically we're going just all the way to the chart object, then even into data, and just go to data sets index zero, and then data which consists of the values here. And of course, if you have a large value, let's say million, we want to maybe show these millions here, we can do that as well. So let's go down here and let's play around with that. So in here, it was a this dot chart. We're going to do here, and we go to data dot data sets index zero. So if I just only do this, refresh, we can see we are now in the weekly sales and we can just grab now the data here with the 18 million data and we just put in here the index number and if I do this, there we are. We will look through it and grab the numbers here. So what I want to do now is return the value because that's the reason why it doesn't show here of course because we don't return anything so it assumes there's nothing to output. So now we're going to say this is the output, what exactly it is. This is the output here. Save that, semicolon, refresh, and as you can see here, we get now, even if there's a larger number, it will automatically show nicely here. And we have all these small numbers. So if I put them back into small numbers here, you will see them all and all the charts, of course, will show nicely with it. And that's basically how you can play around with this. Of course, if you have like a, a larger scale with a lot of items, maybe you need to change this to an uh, a logarith uh, logarithmic, uh, if I'm not if I pronounce it correctly, a logarithmic uh, chart here. So what we could do is, for example, just for for now, I guess that would be a nice exercise. Additional, put that in there. Then we're going to say here, comma. We're going to say here type, and the type by default is linear. But of course, if we have such a huge number, this is linear by default. A linear if I save this right now refresh like this but of course look at these bars here they're so hidden so I say logarithmic if I'm not mistaken that's the way we do it there we are now we start to see them here and then it will start to expand exponentially like this you see them all so if you enjoyed this video and maybe for example you want to categorize certain areas together like group them together in that case, I'm going to recommend you this video here where we, for example, have the branches here of the shops one, two, till six. And then you can see your branch one, two, and three as well. So these are this video here on how to add sub labels to the Y scale in charges, which is also a nice way to display data in another way and very useful way.